Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast, go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed. The subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello. Oh, my camera's like way over here. Let's see if I can fix that. Um, okay, so I'm home alone right now and uh, I'm not, I haven't been talking to other humans. So let's hope my voice is okay today. <laughs> I'm just realizing that I'm like, oh, I haven't talked in days. I mean, I talked to the dog, so. Nice to see you all. How are you guys? Let me, um, let me see if I can change the, the, um, camera angle a little bit. I think I have to zoom it in a little to be able to, to pan it. I feel like it's been forever since I saw you guys, but we were here kind of late on Saturday doing the tool belt, which turned out awesome. Absolutely love it. You know what I forgot though? I forgot that carabiner. Remember I had that little carabiner and little strap and like I stopped and made the strap. Anyway, whatever. Um, if I had the time, I would just make that a pattern for everybody, but um, I'm a little bit busy right now. <laughs> oh man. Um, oh wait, uh, where is the, um... you know what? I'm trying to put my, my scenes back together. I'm going to add something right now. Let's see if I can do it. Let's see if I can manage this. Am I allowed to do that? Oh yeah, I am allowed to do that. Even when I'm live. I decided to um, change the text size on my on my my computer when I after I went live. And when you do that, it um, can't, why can't I make this bigger? Oh my gosh! Sorry, I know you're not here to watch me fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. Oh, well, I'll just leave that tiny. That's fine. Fine with me. <clears throat> anyway. Anyway, why can't I see the, all of the chat? Oh, there we go. Well, I feel like I saw you yesterday because I watched your button down. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I saw you watching that. Thanks, Nancy. Yeah, I did, Anna. I did. Hey, Libby, aren't you with your dad? <laughs> oh, Shim, that's a long stream. Watch it at double speed. Well, maybe like 1.75. Double seems like... Double speed kind of tips it to the point where I'm like, wait, what? And then I rewind and I'm like, I'm countering the double speed if I have to like rewind a little bit, you know? Hi, Ray. Um, yeah, so we were, we've been like moving all this wood on the property. We had trees removed last year and I have learned so much about having people do that for you. We've had people remove trees before, but at this place, we were like, yeah, we'll keep the wood, but they didn't process it for us. So we're having to process it and it's a lot of work. We knew that, but um, there's a few things they did that we're like, wow, we're gonna make sure they don't do that again. Like the way they left everything. And it's it created a lot of work for us. We have had to rent a splitter. We've had to rent a chipper. 
And so when we, all we were doing this weekend was chipping up everything that we couldn't use for firewood or whatever, and we have to get rid of it. Like it can't just be sitting on a property because it's a fire hazard. So, um, so uh, that's what I did. And on, I put a picture of me wearing the tool belt on Instagram, and then I put one in my stories later on of after all day, and I was filthy. <laughs> Like filthy, filthy. So it worked good. <laughs> oh, Carrie, there you are. I have just been thinking about you the last few days, and I knew you were on vacation. How was it? You're, cook you're cooking now with your phone on. Okay, cool. Nice, nice. Um, so this month, I keep meaning to post in the guild. In the There's like a little free group in the guild for doing a capsule wardrobe that we were like, let's do capsule wardrobes. And then I just kind of like haven't done a thing about it. And I keep posting it, keep wanting to post in there because I decided kind of spontaneously to make this month a little capsule wardrobe for gardening and outdoor clothes because I need them so badly. And I was like, yeah, this is very motivating to me. But I haven't been like talking to the capsule wardrobe peeps. So, um... Anyway, this is my plan if you didn't see it the other day. Um, and it's, it's a lot, like I have more things going on outside of these live streams, but I'm live streaming every week. So Saturday I did a tool belt. Um, this week I'm doing cargo pants and I'm doing them by Itch to Stitch Designs, the Sequoia cargo pants. That's what I'm cutting out today. Um, and then I'm going to, I, if you saw me post about the shenanigans scored by five out of four patterns, you know, I'm going to do an experiment with that and I'm going to m make it with the skirt part in a stretch woven rather than like a knit. Cause I made my first one out of a bamboo knit and it's so yummy. <laughs> I love that thing. Um, I'm wearing it all the time right now at home. It's like, it's like perfect, you know, it's a skirt because you get the shorts, it's lightweight, everything, I love it. So I'm gonna make a stretch woven version and I'm gonna use a stretch rip stop for the outer and maybe put in like a zippered welt pocket. Um, and that's next week. So that'll be interesting. I'm pretty sure that's going to be just fine as far as stretch goes. So um, and then the following week, I'm doing the Partner Overalls by Ready to Sew Patterns. A couple people in the Guild have made these. They're really cute. There's a lot of really cute overall patterns out there. I was a little spontaneous picking these. Um, the Partner Overalls are size inclusive. Um, everything I'm making this month, except for one pattern, is size inclusive. Um, and that last one, the James shirt, by also ready to sew patterns isn't very size inclusive and I apologize for that. Um, I'm gonna be using it to make a sunblock shirt, a little pullover sunblock shirt out of the same fabric I made my mom's little sunblock jacket and she texted me the other day to tell me how much she loves it and it works great, so that's a win. Um, I thought that would be a really cute version. I have pictures of each of these patterns but you can look them up. Um, they're on Instagram post or in the guild, so. You can check those out. So that's my plan this month. Every week I'm doing something for this <laughs> thrown together capsule warb and warb, warb. That would be a kind of a nicer, shorter word for wardrobe. Um, and I feel like I, I, is what I'm doing isn't as like, I don't know. It's not as like put together as most people's capsule wardrobes. I mean, we all know Tomcat stitch, stitchery is like the great at capsule wardrobes and coordinating everything. Mine, I'm using a lot of stash fabrics and a lot of things I'm just pulling together, but they're my outdoor clothes, so I'm not trying to look too cute out there. However, I did look like kind of a crazy person out there this weekend because I was also wearing my Blanca flight suit, which I made into gar gardening coveralls, and if you've seen those, you know how kind of crazy they are. They are definitely crazy pants. Um, so anyway, that's my plan. <laughs> it was so hard to come back. Oh, well, that's good. You you got to field test your Winslow culottes, right? Yeah, Malin. I know you saw the dirty picture. <laughs> oh, we were. It was raining here, which is crazy that it was raining in June, um, and we were pretty soaked. So, ham and veggie scramble. Ow. Oh. It is a good way to use leftovers. That's how I feel about pot pie. I make, I, I put everything in the 
refrigerator to make them. Oh, you got the adventure skirt. Okay, yeah, I was really torn. Like, should I do the shenanigans or the adventure? I can't remember the difference. Is the difference the ruffle, Libby? Sometimes I have trouble, you know, like you're like, which one should I do? That's how I was with the Sydney dress by five out of four. And then there's one that's very similar to it. I can't think of it. And I, oh, it's, I, is it the Piper? I think the Piper. And I could not figure out the differences. Like I could kind of see, you know, anyway. Cool. All right. So um, I've kind of laid out my fabric because I'm telling you, I'm cutting it close. Um, so the, I'm making these cargo pants by itch to stitch. And one of the cool things about this pair of pants, which is really hard to see because this, the little line drawing in this is dinky, 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 dinky. Oh, it's straighter. Okay. Um, is that it has a waistband that combines ribbing and fabric. You've seen this kind of waistband before. Like I'll do a little, I'll do a little sketch. So, um, it looks more like, ugh, I'm doing it from memory. <laughs> I think like this. And this right here is one by one rib. I think there's two snaps here. I think I have this in the wrong spot. I have something in the wrong spot here. The fly is wrong. So this is one by one rib. This is fabric and the same fabric as the pant. And there's a little extension here for snaps. You've seen this kind of waistband before, probably. Um, so this is gonna be kind of fun, a really, you know, rare sighting of something like this in a sewing pattern. So it'll be nice and comfy. And I, what I like about this is my thinking is that if I'm wearing these and it's really hot out, maybe having that cotton rib will absorb sweat because that would make it a little bit more comfortable. <laughs> I'm using this rib that is kind of a, just a funny story amongst all of us because we were probably, we've talked about it so much, but I bought it from Nick of Time Textiles. And if you've ever ordered from them, I won't order from them once, but I hear this happens to a lot of people. I ordered, I think, I think I only needed a quarter yard and they sent me two yards of it <laughs> or something. Like I was like, that's a lot of rib. Like it's, you know, rib, you usually only need inches. Like when I used to sell it when I was in high school at a house of fabrics, we sold it by the inch. <laughs> so, oh, one by one rib. So anytime you're wearing like a hoodie or a sweatshirt, that cuff, the neckband and the waistband, that's all one by one rib. So, you know, you know what it is. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, it's true, Nancy. Some of them, that, the shenanigans squirt in particular has a tennis ball pocket that is optional. So, all right. So I also have a knee pad here. This was my daughter's volleyball knee pad and I had planned to make gardening pants with a knee pad pocket and I completely forgot. And thank you, Emily. Oh, sorry, it's whacked the microphone. Thank you, Emily. Uh, she casually mentioned that she was going to be doing that. And I was like, oh my gosh, so am I, so am I. So don't let me forget this. I don't have enough fabric to do the pocket. So I'm gonna use a different denim. It's pretty close, you know. What sets it apart from other rib? Nothing. Um, are you, are you, uh, is it because I'm saying one by one, Shem? So one by one rib means that when you're looking at the rib and you're pulling it apart, and I'm really sorry, mine's dark gray, so I really can't show you anything very close without, it's just probably more frustrating than anything else. So one by one rib means there's one row of knit or I mean, one knit stitch, one purl stitch, one knit stitch, one purl stitch. And so there's like a hill, a valley, a hill, a valley, a hill, a valley. You know, like when you pull apart your rib cuff and it has that ribbed texture. So it means that it's one stitch by one stitch. And that's why it's called one by one. So a two by one 
is usually two, hill, two stitches for the hills, one stitch for the valley. Two stitches for the hills, one stitch for the valley. Yeah, so that's all. Uh, one by one is one of the most common. Two by two used to be very popular, but it, it, um, it's very uh, chunky looking. A wife beater tank top, terrible term. I feel like that's two by two rib, but I might be wrong. Have we renamed those yet? Because I don't like that term at all. Anyway, um, let's, let's get cutting. Let's get cutting, because I'm excited to make these. I'm not going to fit these. I know that sounds kind of a little bit crazy, but um, I'm not going to fit these because they're actually not very tight. They're kind of loose. So I'm just going to pick my hip measurement and I'm going to rely on the elastic to do the rest for the waist. <laughs> so I think that'll be good. Muscle shirts. Thank you. That's a much better term. Yeah, right? Yeah. I was looking at chat. Yes, Emily, thanks for reminding me about the um, padding. Hmm, that's a good question, Rachel. Oh, I think a lot of ribbing the weight of it has a lot to do with the fabric it's made from. So if it's cotton, it's going to be a little bit stiffer and chunkier. But if you were to do something like a cotton interlock, well, a cotton interlock isn't rib. Hmm. That's such a good question because I can think of examples that kind of negate what I'm saying. So. If you want a fine rib, sometimes they will say fine rib, and that doesn't mean fancy. That usually means um, like a small rib. Baby rib is another term you'll see. You see baby one by one and fine is kind of a small, a smaller, softer rib. Hey, Fiona. Undertanks, yeah. So um, if you want like a thicker rib, they will hopefully be actually marketing it that way. The rib I'm using is, is a cotton rib, but it's pretty stout. So I was thinking like when I was at home going, oh, I hope my rib's gonna work. I'm a little concerned about it. Um, because I have it on the, a sweatshirt I made and it barely stretches. I feel like that's actually the pattern because the rib cuff wasn't a big enough piece for how far it had to stretch. So I think that's it. Oh, thank you, Strawberry. Yeah, someone else said in the stream, I don't know if you could see the live chat because the, um, that was the one on Saturday. Sometimes live chat doesn't show up for like 24 hours, but someone did say, oh wait, I am a professional and that is an old way of thinking and it's had to do with CPUs, CPUs. but thank you for saying that. It's a good thing to, to mention. I didn't adjust it at all, Michelle, nope. I thought about fitting these, but um, I'm not going to. Yeah, yeah, Rachel. Yeah, I'm sorry. Let me think about that a little bit. Um, you know, I really love it when people sell matching rib to the French terrier fleece that they're pairing it with. The problem is, I think, for the, the people selling it is that you buy far more yardage in fleece and French terry than you do in rib. Like I said, we used to sell by the inch. So you only need a quarter yard, maybe a half yard, if you just are nervous, um, for every sweatshirt, right? So if you're only selling, you know, nine inches or 18 inches for every two and a half yards of fabric, they end up with bolts and bolts of the rib. Like I see that at Blackboard, Blackbird, and I'm always like, 
I want whatever matched that <laughs> and it's gone, you know. But you can use ribbing like you use um, fabric to make a t-shirt. It'll be, ribbing is a little bit thicker, but don't think of it as like heavy. It's just because it doesn't have like a knit face and a pearl face, it's got the hills and valleys, even if they're, even if they're tiny, even if they're tiny, like little hills, like, you know, being, being made with threads, it's still, it's making it a, a thicker fabric. Yeah, tube rib, exactly, tube rib. You can make cuffs from that. This is tube rib that I'm using today. It's very wide. It used to also come um, 18 inches tubular on the bolt and you would buy it by the inch. And so they used to make the ribbing in a manageable size for, gar for fabric stores. I don't know if they do that anymore. All right. I'm expending a lot of energies, uh, calories the last 24 hours, so I know I'm gonna get hungry earlier today. Yeah, right? Yeah, it's very clingy. Um, you can make a dress out of it. It is gonna be a little bit, you know, va va voom. <laughs> baby clothes out of, of baby rib is really nice. It's very soft and it's very stretchy. Um, so, you know, their movement, you know, they can do their little potato thing. Okay, so I've got my pattern pieces here. They're kind of on here. I'm just gonna check them over. I kind of loosely put them on here, pinned them in a couple places, and then just folded up the fabric. And I did this the other day, so I haven't looked at it. Oh, really, Fiona? Yeah. Um, the, other, the thing you have to worry about with rib is, at least, at least the one, the stuff we used to use, um, it shrinks a lot. In fact, um, we, we haven't talked a lot about shrinkage. We, I've given you like tips on how to measure shrinkage in fabric and everything. Um, but shrink it, uh, rib is one of those weird fabrics that when we would do shrink tests, it would shrink in the length and grow in the width. And so our patterns had negative and positive shrinkage built into them for garment dyeing and they looked weird. Some of those kids clothes looked, they looked very like long and thin. They would look long, like the leggings would look long and thin. And then when we garment dye them, they go through the process, they would, you know, whoop, whoop. <laughs> and, and you're talking about tiny little garments, you know? So the fact that it shrank enough, a measurable amount that you add to add the shrinkage to the pattern pieces for kids clothes, shows how much it shrank because the lycra we use at the time, and this is this was in the 90s. So the fabric has changed since then and it's probably maybe less volatile as far as shrinkage goes. I don't know, I'm not a textile science major. Um, the cotton lycra we use would sh uh, shrink anywhere from 20 to 30% in length. That's a lot, that's a lot. Usually tolerable is 4%. So like when you see, when you buy something at the store, you, you know, like ready to wear, that's not pre-shrunk. It's gonna shrink. It's not pre-shrunk unless it's been garment dyed, then you can kind of like, like sweatshirts and things like that or polyester, it's not gonna shrink, you know, so. But, um, but you can expect usually four to 5% shrinkage and that's a very tolerable amount, even though that's actually can make the difference for your sleeves not fitting, because the sleeve is a really long piece, you know? So, and lengths, leg lengths, so. Um, all right, so I, I folded up my cuff because I did the inseam length. I did fit that, Michelle, like I checked the inseam, and I, you know, checked a few things. Um, <clears throat> I've made Itch to Stitches Mountain View pull-on jeans, which I love, by the way. I think those are really great, and they fit me really good. That's great, Fiona. Did you pre-wash the fabric though? I'm assuming you pre-washed the fabric. Hi, Aisha, how's it going? How's it going? Happy, uh, it's Wednesday. <laughs> what day is it? All right, um, so I just got contacts and I'm in the trial period. So I'm learning how to use them, I'm trying to see. Um, I'm doing pretty good today. 
I'm actually able to see pretty good. So, but I may have to get my glasses, so. This is a woven, and it is recommended for either wovens or stretch wovens, and she says to size down if you do a stretch woven. Oh, okay, Fiona, that's good. Then yeah, you might see, like sometimes things will continue to shrink, but it's such a small amount. You know, like it might, but it probably is gonna be okay. All right, so here's my uh, back. Unfortunately, it's upside down on the fabric, but I have my, can you see these little dots? Probably not, it's a little bright. Is that too bright for you guys? That's my green line, so I measured it to the salvage over there. This is a denim. It's a pretty light weight denim. Oh no, don't say that. I'm, I'm just so tired of my glasses hurting my head, Carrie, you know? Like I can, I can read my ruler. That's pretty good. <laughs> All right, so that's 11 and 3 eighths. 11 and 3 eighths. All right, and then I have this flap here, which, you know, I'm not sure if it's gonna fit there or not. Yeah, we can make that work. It's gonna be on the wrong grain though. And you struggle to find the grain. What do you, what kind of fabric is it, Shem? If it's a twill weave, like it has the diagonal lines, that is really hard to find the grain on. I imagine, is that what it is? Is it like, like a canvas or denim that's a twill weave? Panic. <laughs> you know, to each their own. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see, Carrie. I'm so excited about being able to not have to wear glasses with headphones. But right now, everything's kind of, you know, mediocre. Like, I don't think I can, I can read my phone now, kind of, but it's not good enough. It'll just be too much strain, you know? I <laughs> choose a different fabric. All right, so we have this one here. So right now what I have is I have the front and I have the back. Now I don't have a one-way fabric, so I do have my, my front and my back uh, going opposite ways here. This is the hem of my front. This is the hem of my back. Um, down here at the bottom, I have some waistband stuff. Here, I'm gonna slide it up so you can see. I have some space for the waistband pieces. I'm kind of toying with the idea of um, cutting those in a different fabric, but I don't think it'll save me anything I can use for other pieces that I need. So I may as well just do that anyway. I have these pieces pinned up here because they're only one each, and so I can put one on each layer. Um, this is off grain, but it's just the pocket flap. I'm not worried about it. So the pieces I haven't fit on here are my front pockets, which are patch style. <laughs> Nancy, I know, right? It's so weird to see me without glasses. Yeah, see, that's where I'm at, Fiona. They're multifocal. Yeah. I'm like, they're okay. Hi, Taya. Taya, how's it going? Congratulations on your baby. That was you, right? I'm assuming that's you, same name. Yeah, that's what I would do too, Anna. You purchased a plaid that I love, but the pre-wash step distorted the grid, so the plaid is no longer square. Is it a yarn dyed plaid or a printed plaid, Shem? Okay. This is a front pocket facing. This is a, a zipper guard. This is, you know, for the zipper fly. There's only one of these. There's two of these. I'm um, in the front patch pocket. So I'm, I might use a different denim for these and they're outdoor pants. And I was thinking, well, if the front pockets and the knee patches are in this different denim, maybe it'll kind of go. 4.30 right now. Oh yes, you are definitely in it deep, aren't you? So remember always put your grain line, you know, parallel to your selvage. 
Um, this right here, this pattern piece, back pocket and side pocket. There's a lot of pockets on these. You know, I'm, I'm kind of thinking like, maybe I could leave some pockets out. I have my new tool belt, right? No, because I, maybe some days I don't want the tool belt. Printed, ooh. Well, Shem, I think if you've pre-washed it, I would go by the plaid, not the grain. You know, you know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Yeah, there's not much you can do about that, you know? All right, let's, let's do some cutting. I'm gonna cut, well, we can cut this front one first. Let's make sure we've got this. So I um, printed this out, this pattern. I had it professionally printed, you know, like copy shop or whatever you call it, um, probably over a year ago. I feel like I was in my old studio. So that's kind of nice. But what I notice is if you don't have her pattern printed in color, you have to be able to figure out which dashed line is yours. I did have a little bit of trouble figuring that out. So you might want to make sure you know what your dashed line is if you don't print in color. So, and I'm pretty sure the people I had print this, they didn't do, la they did layers, but I didn't want to pay for color, you know? I'm gonna go for the larger size. I think it'll be a little too big. So maybe we can fit it along the way. Yeah, she's going into winter. I've seen using steam, you might be able to pull it back to how it was. Well, I mean, <clears throat> just pull it diagonally, Shim, if you need to. Like, I, you know, like I, I, you know, even fabric that is yarn dyed and it's it looks kind of like wonky when you, you buy it and then it's still wonky when you wash it. Um, you pull it diagonally the other way to kind of counter the wonk, you know? Um, <clears throat> that's what I would do. But, but a lot of printed fabrics that, you know, it's like really hard for them to be perfect. They're pretty good, but sometimes they can print them off grain. Having all these pins in my pattern makes me kind of nervous. I don't ever usually have pins in my stuff when I'm cutting. But the matching the plaid is probably going to be what reigns supreme, right? I'm doing a whole month on pants fitting and I'm not even fitting these pants. <laughs> what witchcraft is that? All right, so I'm going to mark the notches. Um, this is where the this pocket goes. Make sure that you notch the fly right there, I don't know what this one is, but match this, or uh, notch this one right here where the fly, it goes, it's really important. Um, and as far as this pocket placement, let me go get my choco liner. Choco liner, let's do the soapstone. Soapstone. Okay, I I think it's this one here. Yeah, that one there. And I'm just gonna draw on here where this goes. <clears throat> just using a soapstone pencil, which means it's got like this um, set of lead. It has soapstone in it. 
Um, and then I'm gonna pin where I marked so I can do the same to the other side once I can flip it over. Don't really, not too worried about this right here. Which one did I mark there? I think I want this one here. Not that one. I did have a new video yesterday. Um, the one um, where I sewed the Cameron button up for Helen's closet is, is out. It's a chunky video. <laughs> it is a uh, two and a half hours long, fully time stamped, but that is what she wanted. So, and you know me, I can talk. <laughs> I made the text so big that only a few messages <laughs> fit. Uh, oh, 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 my goodness. For sure, it's hard to say that cut on gray. I know lots of folks hate it, but I just love that I can buy one size patterns from Style Arc. <laughs> oh, nice, Malin. What pants patterns did you get? That's exciting. Would you consider using the fabric? Oh no. Oh, you're kind of talking to Hashem. Or do the same side and pull the fabric until the seam. That's what I would do first. Hey, Elena. I'm hoping you joined the pants fitting train. I mean, I've been seen it. You've been on. You have been on it this year. You've been doing all kinds of great pants fitting. I can't say if I want to do the Morgan jeans or the Danny shorts first. Oh, which one's the Danny shorts? I've heard of those. <laughs> okay, uh, this right here is the, I'm gonna do, I, I was gonna skip the, the tab to roll up your pants, but I'm like, you know what? That might be kinda nice, so I'm gonna do it. That's the leg strap, leg strap placement is right here. Put a couple pins to the other side. I just need one more pin. I think I got everything on there. Oh, I didn't get the <clears throat> end of the fly, but I'm not too worried about that either. Hey, Barbara, how's it going? You never know exactly, Mullen. I want to ask him. True bias. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I think I remember that one, Elena. Nice. Um, what am I doing here? I'm doing this. Mm -mm. Alright. Whoops. I'm gonna go that way. I probably need to sharpen this soon. And you. Right here. And last one. Oh, I lost. I lost it on the right side. There we go. I need more messages to show up on my screen. Six sizes on this pattern? Oh my, Emily. I get the high-waisted trousers from the assembly line. Oh, you got to their sale then? You love the idea of this strap when I wear my muck boots. I would totally roll them up. Yeah, right? Yeah, and I'm just thinking like, I wear pants in the summer because of poison oak sometimes, but sometimes, you know, I might, I might be able to like roll them up when it's getting hot and we're not like in the bushes or something. You're going to do the lander pants. I think that's a really good one to fit. You have the flint trousers. Oh, yeah. 
is the inside, the closure is inside the pocket. Oh, I don't know if I knew that. All right, I may have to ignore chat for a bit here. You guys are chatty, but I love seeing what you guys are talking about. <laughs> So, Elena, do you think you'll use like like a pair of pants you've already fit and kind of compare to your Danny? I mean, you've already have so much invested in your pants fitting journey, right? I have the chicken dance song stuck in my head. Um, this seems like it, Nancy. I never see it. It's kind of like a heavier duty chalk. I like it because, I don't know, I just like it. I don't know. Sorry, I don't, I just like it sometimes. Um, and you know how we feel about the chalk liner. Like, I love the chalk liner, but it is a little bit unpredictable when it's going to come out sometimes, you know? Sometimes. All right, so I can't really see this. So I'm going to cut off other pieces. I'm gonna flip over my, my uh, pattern here. My fabric, I mean. You haven't, Elena? Oh. Uh, where did all this stuff go? <laughs> is it? This isn't. This is. It went up here. That's right. This went up here. I was like, that fits so good there. But I don't remember being there. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised, Elena. We can't get that lucky, right? We'd all be out of a job then. <laughs> okay. Um. Let's see, 11, 11. How close did I get to that? I'm okay there. What did I want though? I need this over here. Uh, this is also, I'm cutting on the cross grain, just so you know. This is the waist piece. I think I only need one though. Oh no, I do need, I need two, yeah. It's clean finished. This was over here somewhere. Uh, these were down here and I need a bunch of these right there. Okay, so we're, we're back on track here. Now we can see our pattern piece. We can, we can go way up here too. And maybe, well, let's see. We can go over a little bit. Let's check my grain though again here. I have to like hold the spot on the ruler because I'm not really trusting my eyes perfectly right now. Hi Missy, how's it going? Welcome back. Uh -huh. Hi, Rebecca. I'm right, missing a lot of things in chat. Tell me if I need to, to see something. Phoenix, Arizona, what's the weather like? I think Phoenix gets hotter than here. Right now it's only 76, <laughs> but I'm, I'm up at my office. So it's uh, usually like 10 degrees cooler, thankfully. All right, let me make sure I don't have any like cuts. And let's do it.
hot as Hades. <laughs> yeah. That's what I always say too. I love that expression. When I was on this like Percy Jackson kick of reading all the Percy Jackson book books, which are some of my absolute favorites um, for the, the world of um, Greek and Roman mythology, because there's, there's another series after it that has the Roman counterpoint, which is very similar. Um, I, was, I was like, oh, I, I love this, all this Hades talk, because I love saying that. Okay. Notches. We need our knee notches. Remember, a lot of pants, they will ease between the knees, ease between the knees along the crotch. So you can't forget those. <clears throat> Otherwise, you might get into a pickle, huh, Fiona? Yeah, I have live chat on, but it's going a little fast today. Am I missing something, Nancy? Let me see. <laughs> I do have live chat on. I've seen mostly everything. Okay. Um, let's make this a little easier to see. I need this line. Side pocket placement. It's interesting that this is at an angle. And then we'll do this and that. Just so I can see it on the other side. Ooh, I was just about to use my rotary knife. Where did, what did I just do with that? There it is. So I want to go this way. And then a notch for the, I mean the drill hole for the dart. Put pins in so we can mark the other side. I really like, I like it when my markings aren't pins, you know, like when it's chalk, but sometimes chalk, you just can't trust it. It, it kind of goes away on you. And then you're kind of left going, wait, where, where, where was this, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's not consistent though. You know, Taya, so, or is it, is it Taya or Taya? Hey Casey, how's it going? I am using a lightweight, non-stretch denim, Casey. It was just in my stash left over from another project and I am cutting it close. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use some other non-stretch denim that looks pretty close. It'll look the same on camera probably for um, some knee patch pockets. So I can put some knee pads in there and for my front patch pockets, unfortunately. There's a lot of markings. These are gonna be not hard to sew, but they're gonna take a bit because there's so much top stitching. <clears throat> yeah, maybe. <laughs> you are a pro though, Elena. You're a pro. All right, can I get rid of this? I'm just double checking, all layers are notched. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, no problem, Casey. Oh no, I lost a pattern piece. I lost a pattern piece, not where we wanna lose anything. Well, gosh darn it. Let's listen to Sarah struggle here. 
Oh, that is so far away. Ooh, I found a button. Okay. I need a backstop. Martina, nice to see you. How have you been? You ready for summer? Legs strap. Side pocket. Back pocket and dart. Lots of markings. So this, you know, when you take the time to like mark everything, I know I sound like a, a sewing teacher, but it'll be faster to sew it because you won't be doing this at the machine. <laughs> That's so true, Shem. <laughs> so much top stitching. Did I get the dart? I did. Okay. There's the backs. I am a chronic putter aware and you have to watch. This is how I can, you know, get everything done in a day, right? Make you a part of it. <laughs> I would remember more often to put the name of the pattern piece though you know like on the outside of the fold so that when sometimes I'm sifting through this thing it's easier to find all right last few pieces that we're gonna do some Jenga with Jenga no Tetris I mean kind of Speaking of middle names, Shem, and, and any, I mean, I feel like this is kind of funny. I just remembered this story yesterday because I ran into someone whose name was um, in a game. I ran into them and they were named Stranger Danger. <clears throat> and I had a f friend, when he and his wife had their first son, they, he gave him the middle name Danger, <laughs> um, which was just funny. He, he was this incredible guitarist um, and then now he owns a music store and he's probably still a very incredible guitarist but his middle his son's middle name was danger and and it also reminded me then of when my daughter was younger like I want to say like third grade right <laughs> so what is that like eight seven or eight, eight, eight or nine, eight, right? Something like that. Okay, Taya, Taya, enjoy, enjoy the sleep. Um, and um, they were like at a, like a ball game. We lived across the street from a, a, a public park. They were at the ball game, I think, whatever it was, it doesn't matter. And I think someone that my daughter knew, but my friends, my friend, her friend's friend didn't know. So they were palling around, like these two little girls palling around. And um, someone, I think, walked up to Cricket and started talking to her. And, you know, like kids know some adults really well and some kind of like, you know, like, wait, do I really know you? You know, but she knew them. Um, and her friends started going, stranger danger, stranger danger, stranger danger, just like yelling it. <laughs> and so my daughter told me this story later on because she thought it was, so funny. We still laugh about it to this day. And even, even her friend laughed about it too later because, but it worked. It totally worked. My, like our friend was like horrified, like, like, oh my God, <laughs> like, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. You know, you know, go, go about your business or whatever. <laughs> that just totally reminded me of it as parents, you know, the things that, um, oof, talk about a grain line looking off, but I just thought I'd tell you that silly story. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put you there. 
You've made shorts a couple of times so far and still have to get the seat and front rise to my figure, but so far I really love them. Nice. Yeah, it's a process, right? On the knee pad patch pockets, you want to make a flap and stitch it down so the pads will stay in and the pads will be tucked in. Yeah, I think that that's doable, Emily. I think if you make the pocket not too much bigger than your the pad that you're inserting in there, you won't have to worry about them falling out. Unless you do cartwheels. You totally strike me as the cartwheel type, aren't you? That's what it is. But even still, I think they'll stay in the pockets. You could put them on the side, you know, like a side pocket for the cartwheeling, you know. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. I have left front waistband and right front waistband. This is me. <laughs> The struggle, man. Ooh, will this fit here better? Oh, this fits here in that whole piece, so we'll save this and do that somewhere else because it's smaller. It'll be easier to fit somewhere else. This is the fly shield. This pin. You know, Emily, one of my ideas, like, because these are definitely going to be outdoor pants for me. I don't plan on making them, like, um, Pants I'd go to work in. I don't think there's anything wrong with them. They're really cute, actually. Um, it's just that I know I want these for that purpose. So they're probably going to get kind of gross pretty quick. But <clears throat> what I was thinking is, what if you made patch uh, knee pads built onto your pants? You know what I mean? Like, what if you quilted some knee patches onto the pants? Cause I was thinking you could just do a little bit of batting, you know, and a square on your knee and then just some stitches through it and some fabric on the back, you know. Does this need interfacing? No, super guard does not need interfacing. One of primary cut, one of interfacing, this one. They're feeling pretty good, Libby. I mean, I didn't wear in the last two days. I, I kind of, forgot yesterday. I got a little distracted. I went to do it and then I just forgot. I don't know how. Um, and I was on my computer all day. So I feel like that might have been an okay call to skip it because um, I may have needed my glasses still to see the screen, you know. So and Sunday we were chipping wood. I definitely wasn't going to have them on then. I wish I wouldn't have skipped two days, but they were easy to get in. I'm doing pretty good on that front. Okay. I need, oh, I need more than the two of these. I need four of these. Hello. That's a flap. You need two per. Okay, so let's look at this here. This is my last bit of fabric. <laughs> We're getting it close. <laughs> All right. I think these this denim is the denim I used to make Michael's jeans that were by Wardrobe by Me. So they're pretty lightweight. It's a it's like an eight ounce denim. It's like Casey that asked what I was using. I think it's eight ounce denim. I got it from Hearts Fabric. It feels like uh, it looks like. The, the like designer jeans you see for guys in the store. Oh, that's the, I've got that down, Carrie. I don't know why, but it's, I've got that down. But you know, like everything's a little bit blurry. It's like it's vibrating. It's not moving, but it looks like it vibrated and then it, it, it took a picture of that like that. That's how it looks, everything. So it's kind of blurry. All right, so I have these back pockets. I have the front waistband and I need four. So I need two, two, so that'll work. So I could do two uh, flaps sideways like that. I still need one more front waist. 
We kind of want those to match, right? Boy, we're cutting it close. Yeah, this is my trial period, Aisha. <laughs> I knew it, Emily. I knew it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Aisha, I'm, I'm, tomorrow I'm calling because it'll be a week and I'll be like, okay, when am I supposed to be able to see? <laughs> Just want to know. <laughs> oh, water resistant canvas. Um, uh, what's the fabric actually? Is it um, waxed canvas or is it fabric that was impregnated with a um, like a chemical or coating to make it waterproof or is it coated like like a Gore-Tex water resistant canvas so that's probably not a Gore-Tex or laminated fabric does it have something impregnated in the fabric so it feels like fabric or is it waxed is the waistband, wait, what well, Fiona? Is the waistband bird Ed is eating for the rib. Hi Kathleen, how's it going? Oh cool, nice, there you go, you got it. You found a copy, nice. Cotton with a coating on the back, coating on the back side. And is the coating a laminated film? Is the waistband a bigger piece? For, oh yeah, the rib piece I have right here. I still have this piece here. This is the, the leg um, straps. Oh, I still have side pocket flaps too. Holy heck. Okay. Um, but yeah, Fiona, here's my ribbing piece. It feels like fabric on, on both sides, is that what you're saying? Uh, I would wash and low dry. All right, Sue, thanks for coming. Oh yes, it's like a film. Oh yeah, yeah, so I would wash it on cold and low dry it uh, um, for like 20 minutes on low. As long as it's not waxed canvas, I think you're totally fine. Then if it's waxed, do not put it in your washing machine. Um, then you'll have to spot clean it. Without seeing it, that's my, um, that's my, that's my recommendation. <laughs> it's not waxed, it's like a, a plastic feeling. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, wash on cold, low dry on low dry 20 minutes. It'll probably dry, be dry before you even, you might not even need to put it in the dryer to be honest, but I will say that putting some waterproof fabrics that are laminated in the dryer will reinvigorate the coating. Nice, Michelle. Yeah, it does seem like it is shorter, doesn't it? At the subs, what is the subs? <laughs> okay, let me focus here. <laughs> All right, we have a lot of back pockets. We have, okay, so you know what I can do is I can do, um, I'm gonna do all the top flaps in my fabric and then the under flaps in a different fabric. Something cute, oh, subtitles, yeah. Yeah, I can't see. I'm in the control room for YouTube, which is like a streamer thing, and um, I don't see the subtitles when I'm in there. I used to watch the stream with you guys and read chat. But I'm liking the control room because it's got some mod capabilities. So like if Terry or Mullen are, aren't here, I could bounce your butt out of here. No, I'm just easy. <laughs> if I want to. It's really just the, the weird bots we get. Okay, so we can tr trim this off. All right. This is my, all my pocket pieces I still have left. <laughs> this is my fabric. 
We're gonna prioritize pockets, flaps, waistband, waist facing, not the leg things, not the pocket facing. We have front pockets, which aren't gonna make it in, um, and side pocket flap. We're gonna do two of those as well. Back pocket interfacing, side pocket interfacing. This is kind of a little bit redundant. <clears throat> fly, that is just fly interfacing, cut two mirror images of interfacing. Cut two of interfacing, leg strap interfacing, cut two of interfacing. This is all interfacing. All right. Okay. So, if I can, could I get a chance I can get like you? Probably not. I actually could do the inside in a different denim for those too, right? Um, I, I'm not going to fit them, Kathleen, because they're a little loose. Um, I'm going to do contrast for the under flaps, and I'm going to do a different denim sitting right here that looks very similar for two of the, the, front, the front pockets or, and the knee patch, the um, padded knee patch pockets. That's my thinking. Because it, it is pretty blue, but, you know, I thought about also just doing the, the flip side of the denim on there. You know, I could still do that. All right. I need one of these. Can I do anything on this? That is the same pattern piece. So I need two of those, two of these, four of these. I need one of this guy. And I really like him to be upright, but he might not be. I'm gonna put you over here so I can monitor your green line. other patch. That was one way I was going to save fabric shim was just make a drop pocket, but I don't feel like doing pattern drafting today. I mean, I always feel like doing pattern drafting today, but I just don't feel like, I just don't feel like it. So I'm going to do, I can fit that there. All right, let's just commit to this. That's how we roll around here. Let's get this up. Oh, I don't need this lower line, just that upper line. It's very, very much like Tetris. Good thing that was my absolute favorite game growing up. <laughs> yeah, you think so, Shim? Yeah, I think I, I could, Barbara, but I actually think I'm okay. You know, like I think this, this is fine. Um, I can't really get a whole lot right there. Like I could maybe do these, but I, I'm, this is a different fabric anyway. Maybe I could do these, the leg things. But do we really care about leg thingies? Um, maybe I could do the pocket. The pocket flaps are pretty big. So I'm not going to sweat it, you know? All right, let's get this guy cut here. I mean, there's six pockets <laughs> on these. You got your cargo carrying capacity, baby. So, um...
So <clears throat> and I'm adding the, the knee patch pockets. So there's 10. There's eight. There's eight. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do, Shim. You know, like, it's not that much darker. Okay, these are back pockets. We're just going to pin these. They're so similar to the side pocket. I'm wondering why. I guess the side pocket's a little bigger. Always check the under layer, especially when you're doing Tetris. You know? Last thing you want to happen. You do all that work and then you're like, oh, I forgot. There's only one layer. <laughs> Not two. I've done that countless times. Or um, when I'm cutting like this, going past my end point here into the fabric and then I can't put anything right there, you know? <laughs> done that plenty. Okay, see so there's side pockets. You don't have to do all these pockets. All of them are patch pockets, even the front pockets. <laughs> I don't feel, I mean, you know, Tetris, fabric Tetris is never fun, but you just gotta sometimes pick your, I don't understand. This goes four to 12 and 16 to 20. So where's the 14? Where's the 14? I want my money back. I'll just cut the larger one and we'll cut it down if we need. They're outdoor pants too and none of it is a one-way fabric and none of it has a nap, you know? Meaning like, like corduroy. So I can get away with a lot. It doesn't mean though that it won't look a little different because my front legs and my back legs are cut upside down from one another, they can look different. So because it's a twill weave, a twill weave will cast uh, the, like the light will look different going on one, one direction compared to the other. But on denim, it's gonna be more subtle. Yeah, I don't know why there's no 14. It's probably just a typo. It's no big deal, it's a flap, you know, like we'll be, we'll be fine. <clears throat> yes, Marlon, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Donna. Nice to see you. Yeah, it's, it is a little stressful until you get there. Like not knowing, like I've done this a lot lately and it's because I've been really determined to use some like scrap fabric. Like this is all scrap denim. I don't know why I had so much because when I ordered it, I ordered... I ordered what the pattern called for. Um, and so maybe the, because I was doing a smaller size, there was a little more than I, I really needed. And this is like, when I do a project for wardrobe by me, she pays for the fabric. So I try and be very cautious and I get her approval. She's very much like, sure, sure. <laughs> She's very, very nice um, that way. I think I cut the selvage on that side, I did. But I'm not gonna go crazy. Like I'm not one of those people out for free fabric and patterns because I don't need, need that at, at all, actually. <clears throat> but it is kind of nice to be able to use this odd amount of fabric, right? Okay, so these are gonna need some inter -fasen. Yeah, Nancy, I feel you on that. Um, I real, I, I feel like uh, that'll be a, maybe a, I don't think, I don't think it warrants a skill building session, but I think we should have a Zoom sometime about like confidence and cutting because I, I totally get that. It is a, such a huge commitment, you know, and you, you feel like, okay, I really, really want this to work. I mean, right? Of course you want it to work. It's a 
That's a, this is, uh, I'm kind of cheating here. I could lay this out actually and go, all right, am I actually on the grain there, you know? If I get this straight on the grain, I don't trust this though, this is, this is very wiggly. But I can just use the grid of my table now to see how well my pocket flap is on the grain. Let's see, will it fit better? Maybe I could do this, put this over here and get this narrower part in this narrower section. It's about the same either way. We still need an under fabric for the flaps. Um, I can spend an hour picking out fabric for that. It's so annoying. I'm so, ooh, that did not feel like two layers right there. Rut row. What? That was like perfect. Okay, well, I got really lucky right there. <laughs> Did <laughs> that's funny. I forget not to say words funny like that. Yes, Shem. Always on a tiny piece of fabric, on a large piece of fabric. The selvage is always on grain. It it is the sides of the loom. Like if you see people weaving the fabric. Yeah, I, I don't like having scraps, Michelle. I'm gonna put my straight edge on this cut edge here and that's gonna get me it. Um, I don't know, Nancy. I think a lot of people think scissors, like I think it just depends on what you like. Definitely wouldn't wanna start a war by saying rotary knives are more accurate because I, I don't think so. Um, it's really easy to cut wrong with a rotary cutter, just like it is with scissors, you know? <laughs> it can get away with you, get away from you. All right, home stretch. Home stretch with lots of interfacing to cut. Hi, April, how's it going? Do you, April? That's awesome. I kind of do too. <laughs> I know I do. Yes, for twill, use the selvage. I'm sorry if I miss, missed that, always. If you have, in fact, <clears throat> this is one cutting tip. If you're cutting a twill weave, which is like denim, denim is a twill weave, try and cut the pieces closest to the fold first, which I know makes a lot of us nervous because you're cutting essentially in the middle of the fabric if you were to open up the fabric, right? <clears throat> the other thing is you can cut them at each piece out in a single layer. But if you're cutting out in a single layer, it's really easy to not remember to flip your pattern piece so you have a left and a right, right? So if you're gonna do two layers, which most people do, um, even though you have the risk of the fabric torquing because of that, because that is a pants thing, always cut the fabric to closest to the fold first that way you leave all the fabric close to the selvage and you can see your grain line. It's the same with scraps. However, when it comes to scraps, I usually cut towards the selvage um, because that way I have that piece of fabric I can open up. Now, if it's a piece of fabric that's only gonna use like, like if my, my fabric, you know, is here, right? And this is the full width, right? This is, this is the selvage and that's the fold and I only have a piece that's this big, what I would do is open up the fabric, open it up, and then fold the piece over, you know, fold the piece over and cut it. Because then you have the biggest possible piece left. So, Terry, how's it going? <clears throat> How is my watering mat wearing? Awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. I have a video. It is seven eighths of the way edited for doing mulch mats. Nobody asked for it. I still wanted to do it. 
um, and my computer keeps crashing. So my brand new computer keeps crashing. So that's a little stressful right now. So um, it keeps crashing in that editing spot of three quarters of the way through that video. But I show an update of it. So, hi Heidi, how's it going? You're working from home today, nice. That's great. Wearable muslins, <laughs> yep. Yes, that's true, Michelle. Yeah, those 60 millimeters are chonkers, aren't they? Okay, so this is what we're left with. This is rib right here. Um, and then let me make an interfacing pile. So we have, we still need to cut some flaps, remember? We need the under flaps. And then these are all the pieces that I'm going to need in interfacing. Okay, so don't forget those. Put my pockets on top of my pants over here. And then we have all these. There's a lot of pattern pieces. This is all interfacing here. So we have the leg strap, the fly, um, side pocket interfacing, side pocket interfacing. If you need to interface the hems of your pockets, I'm doing denim, I'm not gonna interface the hems. The, but, well, I take that back. Because we're doing snaps it is a good idea and that's why it's there. So this is the in back pocket facing. Uh, this is the left front waistband, the right front waistband. These both need interfacing. Um, the front waistbands and the back waistband, all of that, okay? And then your flaps too. Um, and then I need fabric for those. So let's make our interfacing pile. I usually group all my pieces always by fabric so I don't forget things. We just need a few more denim pieces. So let's finish those. I'm gonna cut them out of these, this muslin for half moon atelier jeans that I did. Remember when I was fitting those? How could we all not forget when I was fitting those? <laughs> so I need two front pockets. I don't trust how I cut these out at the bottom though, so I'm gonna eyeball the grain. I actually can see a grain line on this, thankfully. I'm gonna cut two of those right out of the middle of my muslin. Yeah, I used to only use 28 millimeter. I really love how easy it is to get into the curves of necks and armholes. but I was straining really hard with that thing. You know, like I should have been using a bigger one when I was doing thicker stuff and I wasn't. All right, so this is the front pocket. And um, it has a nice little curve right here. I don't need this pattern piece. That one I don't need. Okay, this was my, my muslin for fitting the Half Moon Atelier 101 jeans. <clears throat> okay, um, oh, you're not, you're Missy? Well, have a good day. <laughs> what, whatever your name is, I'm sorry, I forgot. <laughs> I think it's Missy. Oh, really, Nancy? Neat. No, it's not good for thicker fabric, Michelle. Don't struggle with it. I ended up in hand therapy, trust me. Yeah. You don't want that to happen. That was terrifying, thinking like, like I think that the, some of the most terrifying things when you're someone who already has access to certain, you know, senses. You know what, I'm just realizing, I don't know what the grain line on the back of the pant looks like. Okay, I just got lucky on that, but let's not assume here. But um, like, Losing my eyesight because I am a sighted person and I'm used to having my eyesight. That's terrifying to me. And the use of my hands. That's the other thing that terrifies me. <laughs> and I did. I kind of lost the use of my hands for a bit. It was really awful. Okay. So this is the front pocket facing.
Okay. We're using our scraps. Yeah, I really like it for knits too because you don't have to pick up the fabric to cut it. I've met a lot of people though that really tried to like rotary knives and just didn't and that's fine, you know. Oh, that's really great, Heidi. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> That was a fun one to make. I actually really enjoyed editing it. I was kind of nervous about it because I've never been hired to make a video that I edited. I usually make the video, hand it off, they edit it to their format. And um, she was so flexible. She was just like, yep, that sounds good. I like your, I like your format, you know, like I'm not, I don't want to change it. And so I just kept it the same. And <clears throat> I was still really nervous. <laughs> Oh, some linens are too tough. Yeah, that is true, like cutting hemp's. Oh yeah, rotary cutter for slippery for sure. Anything you can just mash it on the table and leave it and just, because you're cutting straight down, you don't have to lift it up to cut it. Oh, cool, Kathleen, that's awesome. Oh, that's right, Nancy, that's right. You, that's been a year. Oh, cool, Heidi. I'm glad. Um, I need two of these. Cut two primary fabric. This is the little leg strap. It's funny that I don't think linen is going to necessarily dull something faster. I guess it could, but it is a natural fiber. That being said, oh shoot, that is the worst straight line I've ever cut. Well, maybe not the worst. <laughs> yeah, linen is pretty tough. I mean, when you think about it, you're cutting wood. I mean, you know, it's been very processed, but <laughs> I don't need to be dramatic. <laughs> okay. We have a lot of hardware. Do you guys want uh, me to do the hardware on camera? It's like, it requires 14 snaps, but I, I only have 12. So I think I'm gonna make my cargo pocket flaps with one snap each rather than two each. Two is just kind of cumbersome to use anyway. Bye-bye prototype. I don't think I need to save this now. I think I, I feel like you've served your purpose. Double time. It was traumatizing. Okay, so we still need an under fabric for my flaps. So the other day during one of our Zooms when I was hanging out and we were chatting and stuff, I, um, I think it was just me and Barbara actually. I think it was just me, the two of us. I took all of my leftover fabrics from projects, like, like true scraps from projects. And I did this, I like made them into tidy little bundles and, and tied them up, look, check it out. This bin was just getting so crazy, you know? So um, I put them in this bigger bin and so I put my yarn dyed plaids together, right? So denim, these are all my flannels. Cotton prints, sweater knit, embroidered stuff, lace. And then I have bigger pieces together. And then they're all on their end, their ends in here, like on their end, like this. It's kind of hard to tell, but, and it's so nice. So I've been, I've been using this stuff so much easier now for other projects because they're like, this was so easy to find today and it wasn't this crazy bin. I just need to do it to my knit spin now. Yeah, cute little bundles. Yeah. Okay, let's cut out the rib knit. 
Ooh, loosey goosey rotary. Ooh, I would ask that some of the hardware is done in camera. If that's the same type, I don't need to see you do them all. Yeah, they are all done the same. You see, you do you guys? Some of you do. Okay, so yeah. So maybe what I'll do is. Oh wow, yeah. Um, hi, Sydney. How's it going? Yeah, I think what I'll do is um, do what I can off camera. That's a lot of hammering. We'll see. So this is a, a tube of knit. See how there's no selvage. So knit fabric when it's knit is knit in the round. Like you do, a, like some people knit sweaters in the round and sometimes they knit pieces and then they seam them. So, <clears throat> and there's lots of arguments for doing either. <laughs> um, when you some, see knits with a selvage, often they cut it and, and then it has the, um, you know, edge that you're used to. But most knits are made in the round. And so that's why they come tubular, dude. Okay, Nancy. Oh, a pair of jeans, Terry. Yeah, I mean, it just makes it less bulky, you know? All right, so this is my rib waistband. Half inch seams, huh? Oh, this is cute. She does a wiggly stretch line. That's very cute. We used to always go like this. So your this is your length grain, right? That's your length grain. But we would always do this kind of arrow. So it would be offset like that. And that was always, and we would also say stretch sometimes like this. <laughs> We would really make it obvious like that. I like that she does a little wiggly like, ooh. That's what I do when I put my pattern pieces on the fold, remember? <laughs> now, if you had a fabric Rib isn't gonna be like this, but say you were cutting something completely different, a dress or a top or a t-shirt, and the fabric you got, the maximum stretch was actually in the length grain. You gotta think about that because some fabrics, like if you were using it as a shirt, I would use the length grain. Like I would just cut the grain line parallel to the, you know, just like you do. But say you wanted to use the body of the shirt as the same for the same fabric as the neck band. But the greatest amount of stretch is going long ways, not crossways, which is most most often what we see. You have to make a choice there. Oh yeah, Annie Anna, I know. Well, you can see why I have it. I mean, because I've done that so many times and it's comes from you know working in the garment industry, all the patterns are the pattern pieces are full pieces. They're never cut on the fold, never. And so I kept doing that. Like when I would do home sew patterns, I would forget and I would cut down the fold, you know, because I was used to, I don't know, I just wasn't used to that. So it was just me being very uh, negligent that I had to come up with something. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna use my little scissors. I, I actually don't like notching rib and knits and stuff. Degree of greatest stretch, yeah. Yeah, exactly, Anna. Dogs, yeah, I've seen that before. Um, yeah, greatest stretch. I'm just going to mark the center for now. 
No, let's just mark the outer. I'm hoping this one is my notch. I wish there was some sizes written on here. Like I love that her patterns are printed in color, but like I just can't remember like this right now, this line right here has no dash pattern in it while this one does. So I'm kind of like, which one is it, you know? Logic tells me it's the outer one because I'm doing the larger size. So that's why I did that. Okay, all I need now, this, this extra rib has really served me well. Thanks, Nick of Time. <laughs> they asked if I wanted to be an ambassador and I was like, well, let's chat. You can send me an email. Never heard from him. I was like, yep, okay, no problem. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I haven't done my volleyball, my volleyball, my patch pockets for knees. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. So I'm going to cut this apart. I'll probably, I think I'm just going to cut around this stitching here. Oh yeah, that's, that's good. I think any of those little indications, if you're really consistent, like they work for you, because it's really easy to get bogged down with all the tips out there, right? And you're like, oh, that's a good tip, but it's just hard to remember to do them all. You need like a tip for remembering tips, you know? Oh, this power meshes. What could I use that for? Uh, the waistband is stretchy. It's uh, It has elastic also in the rib waistband. Um, I, I'm so around the edge of this, this is a molded foam knee pad. Can you see that there is a flat seam going around the perimeter where the fabric is covering the molded, um, it's not molded. What they did was they put a piece of foam in here and then they quilted it through all the fabric. And so <clears throat> the fabric was flat seamed, which kind of looks like the, the, the underside of a cover stitch, but on both sides, right? They did that to make the pocket around this. That must be a crazy machine that does that. It's doing a flat seam on one side of the like you, it's like a zipper foot version of a uh, flat seam. Damn, I would just love to look at just machines. So, I, I if I took the fabric off, I'd have to unquilt. I'd have to unquilt it too, so I'm not going to do that. Oh, that's awesome, Terry. Ooh, I think you should do a post in the guild about that. <laughs> so if I thought that this, if this was the, let's see, we start here, right? And it's sewn down. Now it would be loose, you know, like it's not going to be on a rigid table, but this is just not like I could probably get my, the pad in there, but look at that. It's not big enough, right? Let's turn it this way. So we're looking for something more along the sides, the size going sideways with just a hem. Right? We need a, a seam allowance around the perimeter to edge stitch it down. Cool, thanks Terry. That'd be awesome. 
And remember, like I'm saying, like it wouldn't be against the table, right? It'd be this loose, you know, wiggly pair of pants that you could slip it. So the, the backside can expand too. However, you don't really want that because it'll take away from the fit of the garment. So we're trying to keep the back, the pants side to be as neutral as possible. But getting it in and out, you'll have a little bit of give, right? So I think that something like this, we could make this, we could even gusset it like that, but we could really nerd out on engineering a pocket for this. <laughs> You know, like it, it could have like little little um, um, darts in the corners so that it, it sits up. That's very easy to do. We should do that. Let me think about this for a second. So if we did this piece here. If you, Emily, <clears throat> if you made the pocket deep enough, you wouldn't have to do a flap. It might be a little too deep for the whole pad that you're putting in there, but be, the fabric then would collapse against itself to the pant above the patch, the pad, once you shoved it in there. So let's start with that as a guide. <clears throat> Here's a piece of scrap paper. So what do we want? I'm not even making sure that this is square. Right now, I'm just kind of doing a quick and dirty pocket. All right, so this is our starting point, right? I think we could add maybe like a quarter of an inch to each of these edges for a little bit more depth. Um. Uh, you don't have to do a strip of fabric. You could do uh, the gusset that, like, the one in the pocket skill building session, um, the gusseted pocket. And basically, <clears throat> it's going to look how I'm going to do this one. So I'm going to add a hem now. Because I think it still needed a hem. I'm just going to cut this out. So this is my pocket with all the seam allowances on it. A quarter of an inch extra and the hem. And the depth of this patch, it's like three quarters of an inch, right? So if you want a three quarter of an inch gusset going around. Hey, Vestigia, how's it going? Nice to see you. If I do a half inch seam allowance and I want a three quarter inch depth, I'm going to take off. Wait, let's just draw it on here. There's literally a pattern in the skill building session for cargo gusseted pockets. No drafting required. And I show you how to make it bigger. All right. So that is the turn back. And so then this is our gusset. All right. So basically this is going to be the finished size of my pocket that inner box. Sorry, it's so bright. Um, it's going to be the finished size of my box. And the gusset will be outside of this perimeter here. So that means you need to 
cut out these corners, right? But we need some seam allowance, so let's add our half inch back like that. So we're going to take off like a three quarter of an inch uh, corner. Is that what that is? Wait. <laughs> I'm a little bit struggling with the old eyesight. Yeah, it's a three quarter of an inch. Usually, whatever my gusset ends up being, I end up making the corner that, but I, I don't think that's foolproof, so don't quote me on that. I gave myself a one inch hem at the top. And so now we have knee pockets. So let's uh, pretend, let's pretend that we're sewing our knee pocket together. We'll just do a little uh, sewing here. <laughs> Fold it along our gusset. <clears throat> All right. And remember, we have our seam allowance, right? And we have our pocket turned back. All right. So, right now, let's turn back our hem. And I'm gonna hem it using some removable tape here. Just gotta love sewing with a stapler and removable tape, right? Yep, it is, Shim. Uh, it's in part one. Wait, oh gosh, don't quote me on that. Okay, so that'll work. And now I'm worried it's gonna fall out because Emily's worried it's gonna fall out. Um, you know what, Emily? I'm gonna put these on the inside of my pants. That's what I would do. I'm gonna put these on the insides of my pants. So all you'll see on the outside is the stitching line of attaching it. Yeah, right, Shim? My, when I was, a, like, I, when I've been interviewed, I always get the, so did you make clothes for your Barbie dolls? Which I, I resent because I, hated Barbie dolls when I was a kid. No, no shade for people who like Barbie dolls. I don't know why I was so against them I was a, when I was a kid, but I was a pretty hardcore tomboy. Like, I, you know, we played Dukes of Hazard <clears throat> on our bikes, and I was not Daisy Duke. <laughs> so, um, when, when my mom's friends would be like come over and they would give me a gift and it would be a Barbie, I, the look on my mom's face when she would see it, she'd be like, oh no. And I'd be like, thanks. <laughs> you know, so I, I didn't sew Barbie clothes when I was a kid, but I have been um, humbled to remember that I did sew clothes for Snoopy's girlfriend, Belle. Yes, Snoopy has a girlfriend and I would use twisty ties. So you know the, the tie on bread bags? Not the, not the little square, like hard plastic disc, you know, not, not this thing, not that, but the, the little piece of paper with the wire in it. 
And so I would make her clothes and then I would poke the twisty ties through holes that I would force through with the wire and then I would twisty tie them onto her. <laughs> No, Marlon, I just don't want them to take up my pants. I don't want them to make my knees tight. So I think that this will be fine. And, and actually a lot of um, knee pad pockets are gusseted. It looks like they'll have like little darts there. I mean, it's kind of like a dart. All right, so we need this fabric and I have my trusty muslin here. Let's see if I have enough. Probably don't. Probably don't. I may have to. Oh, maybe I do. Wow. Okay. Ooh, that fits in there. I'm kind of lucky, huh? Oh, yeah, definitely, Marlon. Right? That seems pretty appealing, like that world, like all the little things you get to do, like as a craft, it's very diverse as far as the skills you get to employ. <laughs> okay, wait, um, I'm hung up on the term life-sized dino. <laughs> Look how big was this thing? <laughs> Like, uh, <laughs> oh, Emily, that's a good point. What if it, we, it was a side opening pocket then, Emily? I think the key is to make it snug. Oh yeah, Mullen, those are so sweet. Yeah, there's so much to do with those. Okay, there's one. Oof, it's just like, there's like this kind of slight texture to my denim. Oh, you can't even see it. Can you see it maybe in the camera there? That I can kind of see vertical lines, which is nice. Still twill weave. Oh, like character. Okay, life size meaning human sized dinosaur. That's a, hilarious. Why are the Flintstones? <laughs> Yabba dabba doo. That's so funny. My mom and I were just talking before I started the stream about. She's going to the movies to see the Jurassic Park movie. <clears throat> and she says, oh, I can't believe it's the last one, which I didn't know. And the last one I saw, we were actually on a trip to New Zealand. I saw it in Nelson, New Zealand. And um, it really reminded me, I was like, oh my gosh, I forgot. Like that trip seems so long ago because it was like right before the whole panini. And <clears throat> It was such the true like vacation summer movie to go see, you know, but it was so weird to be somewhere. Like it felt like we were cheating on our vacation to go to the movies, but it was kind of a nice break too, you know? And it just brought me back like, wow, has there been any since then? That's, that was a few years ago. Maybe there have, I don't need this. I don't know why I'm pinning it. I don't need the pattern piece. Um, and she said, yeah, this is the last one and I was like wow end of an era and then I was totally cracking myself up I'm like the Jurassic era <laughs> I'm like what's next she's like it's the Cretaceous era new dinosaurs <laughs> she got so excited <laughs> like maybe they're winding up for a whole new um you know franchise <laughs> 
Oh, they're not going to see Jurassic Park. They're going to see the Top Gun movie Maverick, but they're going to go see that again. They also. You made it all like out of felt. I feel like we've talked about this. <laughs> Are you still friends with all those folks? Do they know like what a good friend you were to do that? All right, we just need fabric for the back of our flaps here. Okay. And we need all the interfacing. Boy, that's a lot of interfacing. You know what, Emily? I just had an idea. What if you made your pockets out of knit and you put them on the inside of the garment and you made them a little bit small so they'd stretch and hold your knee pads inside? Right? You, don't, you, you can make it just a little bit small and then make sure that when you sew it on, it's not flat, like it's actually stretched a little and you're going to have to have it flat around three of the sides but what I would do is you know if you take your pattern piece and just pivot out like a dart right something at the top but to nothing at the bottom so that's a little bit smaller that's what I should do um, and then you could still turn under the edge and top stitch it down I would do it on the inside of the pants and then that way also if you don't have your knee pads in it's just a soft piece of fabric Okay, um, we need an under fabric for the flaps. Oh, I just get overwhelmed picking things, you know? I have all this pre-washed stuff. Um, actually, what if we do something kind of kind of cute? I have this little scrap here. Well, I can get two. <laughs> I can't get four. Oh, here's more. Here's more. No, that's not the right fabric. Well, oh, what about this? What about this? What about this? Let's just bring this over. <clears throat> These are all my like failures as a fabric designer. <laughs> oh, well, this gray. This isn't pre-washed though. It would kind of coordinate with my um, knit waistband, you know? Oh, this is a lighter weight. This would be, this would be good. This one, these aren't pre-washed. All my, like it has pockets fabric, that's pre-washed. All of this stuff is pre-washed. You know, like this right here is very obviously pre-washed. It's like a stitch line. Orange is, orange is never, um, never the wrong choice. <laughs> hmm, what else is washed? I don't think any of you are washed. All that is in this, this bird fabric these are washed. Yeah, I like the gray too. I think the gray is kind of nice, you know? So how about I pre-shrink this? I'm not worried about it actually, it's a flap. I'm not gonna worry about it. It's a flap. I could have even made my card. No, I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, I don't think it matters exactly, Shim. Okay. I had it printed on dogwood denim and the petal. <laughs> so I have, uh, I have options. I'm going to use the petal. It's the same exact pattern piece at that size. So I'm going to cut four. Yeah, I used my bird fabric for something. I think it was maybe on my mom's. 
something or other. I don't know. That was like Michael took a picture of this of this bluebird. Like not a blue bird, but a bluebird. <laughs> and so I drew it just practicing because I'm terrible. Um, and then I just made it into a fabric for fun. That better be four layers. It is. Okay. All right. Now the long, deep of interfacing. Okay, so two for you, two for you, and you guys need interfacing. That wasn't so bad. I survived picking fabric. All right, so let's talk about interfacing here. I am fighting with my interfacing right now. <clears throat> I literally did a test and I still, look at this, I did a wash test. So a little background. I am pretty convinced now that fusible woven interfacing, something changed during the great Panini because I have been using this stuff for ever since I discovered it. I didn't really use it for years and years because I just used fabric. I just don't really buy into always using fusible interfacing. It's fine. I use it a lot too. And I started using it again when I started streaming because it was so common and I just didn't really need to be on a, um, wow, Chaka, yeah. I didn't need to be on the like hill of, you know, using fabric for interfacing. Like you can use whatever you want, whatever works for you. And Hearts Fabric was sending me this really nice fusible woven interfacing. I was like, this is great. So it's like actual fabric with the fusible glue on one side. But then I got a batch, not from them, and it kept creating this texture on my fabric. Yes, like SF-101. In fact, it is SF-101. And so I um, had bought two bolts of it, white and black, from Joanne Fabrics. I haven't tested the black because I don't use it as much, but the white is pretty much ruining anything I put it on. It's creating a, a texture that's really awful. And I posted this in my Instagram stories and I regretted it because everybody, I got so many comments and I just couldn't, I could barely keep up on it. They were all very well-meaning, helpful people with lots of really good ideas. Some of them I was like, yeah, yeah, I know. I know how to use this stuff. I've been doing this a long time. I don't need that right and and everyone had these like we got to do this you got to do that um you should not have to pre-wash interfacing by the way you know like come on pre-washing a glued surface no so um i did do a little test and here it is so i took a piece of it i have been really busy so i haven't really looked at it so i took an entire piece this is the whole width of the fabric and I cut an, a half a yard off. It's 20 and 3 eighths inch wide to begin with. I drew a 10 inch square because that's what I'm accustomed to using when I determine shrinkage. And it really didn't shrink much. Eighth of an inch each way. So one inch would be 10%. So we're talking about 1% kind of, right? Yeah, uh, I'll have to do is interfacing, Elena, but yes. Yes, I made a gusseted pocket for the knee pads. I'm going to sew them to the inside of the garment. That's where I'm at right now. And I was just about to cut interfacing, so I just thought I'd go on my little rant about it. So the 18-inch edge here, it shrank a quarter of an inch. The entire width, 20 it was 20 and 3 eighths. And this is a 19 and a half. So 19 and a half. Is 
Yeah, I hope that it's older stuff, Aisha. 19 and a half divided by... So that's 10% in the width. That's a lot. <laughs> I think that's a lot. 10% is a lot. So what's probably happening is... <clears throat> I knew my throat would get tired. I'll bet the cotton fabric they're using is slightly different and shrinking. Probably has nothing to do with the panini. I don't know. I don't really, whatever. But um, I'm so scared to use it. And I have, I'm making a, dress, <clears throat> a pants dress for him <clears throat> this Saturday. And you're supposed to fuse all of the pieces. And I am probably not going to do that. So... <laughs> didn't put in the dryer it also shrinks up yeah yeah so I don't know I mean I don't really feel like it's something that I should have to figure out I think that this should come to me perfect so so I have this roll of trico that I bought long story but I love it it's three inches, I think, three inches wide. It comes in different widths. I got it from Waywack. It is the handiest stuff. <laughs> Most flaps will even fit on there, but these won't, right? So that I'll need to cut out. But like, look at this. Those fit. I can just go like this, you know, like, okay, there's one. I mean, how fast is that? Right? Okay, so those are done. I love this stuff. Ironically, I, I complained to them about it because I thought it was supposed to stretch and it doesn't. And um, they refunded my money and I was like, you didn't have to do that. Like, I'm totally still gonna use it. But they were kind and they, they refunded it. And um, I'm using the heck out of this stuff. I will definitely buy it again. But I think this is a lot easier to use. And like, I use a lot of one inch wide pieces and so I just have them in the bin, just sitting there waiting. I don't put that in my mulch mats. Oh, that's a good point, Shim. That's a good point. Would you take that risk? Asking for a friend. <laughs> um, like this curved thing, it probably won't work for the curved thing, but I have fudged some things. <clears throat> yeah, it won't work at all for that. That's okay. So we're going to do these. It, it will work for these little guys, though. And I think I only need two. Let's see. It's just so much easier. Interfacing, like, woven has a grain line. This stuff, I mean, maybe, but it's not like a woven interfacing. It's Trico. So it's a knit, which is totally fine to use. All right, so I have those done. I mean, you know how it is. Laying out interfacing is kind of a pain in the butt. <laughs> I don't like it. Wasn't there a pin? Where'd the pin go? Where'd the pin go? Wasn't there a pin? Did I not have one? Those are done. Yeah, is that the one I was sharing that day, Elena, that um, someone in the Beatrice group shared with me? Because so this this piece is going to fit perfectly. Because remember, this is extra paper right here. Remember, that was the stuff I lined up on the already cut straight edge, right? So look at that. So many pattern pieces are actually three inches. It's it's astounding. <laughs> look at that. It's perfect. I know I'm selling you guys on this. 
So these pieces are probably too big to put one next to the other, but that's okay. Yeah, I think that's that was them. It's like an old school website, right? Okay, so I need two, two, and two. This I probably already have some one inch pieces. I just kind of keep them handy. They're really handy when I was doing um, some demonstration over and over again. Oh, maybe a uh, plackets and stuff. Oh, look at this piece. <laughs> it's actually the right size. <laughs> I need one more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Classic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut two, cut two, cut two, cut one. No, no, cut two with this too. Okay. I like to try and use some of these little scraps I have. Here's some... There's a scrap. Let's get this one finished so we can move it out of the way. Done. Let's see here, here, what can we get? Can we get, well that's two, and this is two. Two, two, and two, same thing, size four to 12 or 16 to 20. <laughs> All right. Yeah, right, Emily? I am with you. Now my contact's kind of bugging me. Um, I am not a big fan either. This says zero to 10, 10 to 14, so. Um, it, it's, it's nice for live streaming because once things are fused, it's less pieces for me to keep track of. <laughs> and I, I don't use it as much when I'm not live streaming. Isn't that funny how live stream has shaped, live streaming has impacted my sewing a lot. And, and not negative ways, but just ways I do different things differently that I don't when I'm not streaming. Not things like I'm, I'm hiding or anything like that. But um, ooh, that was a very not straight line. But, you know, it's like, I don't know. Okay. Alright, so we just have that. This is a lot of interfacing to cut out. But for all these snaps, it'll be really, it'll be really good. Did you get samples from them, Elena? I need to do that. I'm just feeling kind of like, great, now I have these two bolts of that stuff, you know? And maybe Shim's right. If I use it for my dress form, that will use up a lot, right? <laughs> um, so, you know, now what do I do? Here's my old school stuff. 
just a Pellon. What is this? Nine one one FF. Oh, fusible featherweight. I don't know why they call it featherweight. It doesn't, it's not, I meaning it doesn't seem like light as a feather, right? Do, 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 let's see, one here and one there. I think I can do that. So then that'll be those. And then we just have, so I feel like it's just a little bit more, you know, wasteful in a way. Cause look at this piece now, I have to go along the side. I, I think I'll order, the next time I order that stuff, I'm gonna order probably like a one inch roll and then a four inch roll. <laughs> Oh, this is the end of the bolt, so it's really wrinkly. I needed the bolt for something. <laughs> yeah, it's there's nothing feather about it. Like what? Where is it? Where do you go from featherweight? You know? Like where do you go? If you want it lighter, what's left? What's lighter than a feather? Incidentally, we have this little cup. This is a noodle story, which is the little cat that adopted us recently. So Ray's ears are probably perking up now. Um, <clears throat> and uh, we have this like little vase and it has feathers in it because we find really cool ones. There's hawks, there's actually an eagle that flies around and which is, which is pretty spectacular in America if when you see an eagle, especially in California. Um, and um, I saw, I didn't notice the other day that the vase, all the feathers were out. <laughs> I was like, huh, I know who was here, a noodle man. Wigan, oh yeah. Oh, you use it, Emily, but never on fabric that is on the, yeah. No, but an instructor that I had, said, oh, that's nice. That's really cool. That's a that's a nice thing for like, some, like a class, you know. They give you some. It's a great way to do it. Okay. All right. So we only need four of the flaps because we're only going to interface one side of the flap. This stuff I don't have a problem with. This is just like, this is non-woven. When I say that, it's just not fabric. It like woven fabric, right? So I'm not trying to be patronizing. I'm just trying to explain. Cause I feel like a lot of people won't ask, well, what's the difference between those? They're, they're too, they're, they're thinking everybody knows and they don't, but it's so confusing. So most people are kind of like, wait, fusible, non-woven, fusible, woven, woven, non-woven, non-fusible. I mean, it's just um, a lot. Yeah, and then organza is great. I don't have any organza on hand, I don't think. I have some Bimberg rayon for lining. But God, that stuff is slicker than snot sometimes, you know? <laughs> okay, so then all of these need to be fused, but I am done. I have uh, these little bins and this is my fabric bin because I keep fabric for interfacing. I know it's washed, that's why it's in here. I was tearing through this the other day though, so it's all a mess. So let's kind of tidy it up a little bit. This piece isn't washed, but I know that. Like I, I still know that. <laughs> um, and then these are all my fusibles right here. And every little piece, man, is kind of usable sometimes. 
and then my muslin or that kind of fabric is underneath. Yeah, Benberg is, it's nice to wear. Like I have, um, my Mayo So Distress is lined in that and I, I've used it for pocket lining, pockets because it takes up no space in your garment and it's tightly woven enough that you can safely use it as a pocket, you know? Not like some lining fabrics that are a little bit too wishy-wishy, you know? Okay, that was a long cutting adventure, but I'm really glad we got all through of it, through it. So um, <clears throat> I'm gonna uh, iron these on off camera and then I'm going to look and see what I can add snaps to. Oh, that sounds perfect. Yeah, Elena, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that stuff is so hard to wrangle, like lining fabric in general. I don't blame you. Okay, I'm also gonna stack all this up. These are my knee pockets, right? Hey, I'm excited. Ooh, I'm so excited. <laughs> All right, so we got, I got my snaps. So I'm using some uh, spring snaps, cap snaps, and I'm using all of the ones I have. I've got a couple of zippers in here. So one thing I wanna note, uh, she, and then I have my one inch interfacing, that's what that is. <clears throat> my knee pads. This is my little hammering thing for the snaps. It's just like a, a pad. <laughs> so I check my machine, my sewing machine, because um, I do it over there. So one thing I want to note is, em Emily, I, I, I hope you're going to hear this, is um, Night Mullen, um, she says use a plastic, what does she use? All-purpose plastic zipper. But I think think you're gonna want one with a stop. Otherwise your zipper is going to come down. So a fly zipper is a little different than all purpose. And I could be wrong, I don't, but I don't know how you'd get around this. I don't know how you would change this. Um, you definitely are gonna snap the top. That's, that's very similar to the way you finish, finish any fly is with a button or buttonhole or snap, whatever. Um, you're going to need something like a fly because you need the locking aspect at the top right here, right? Because if this doesn't lock, your pants are just going to come unzipped as you wear them. So, it says six inches and above. This is really tiny, but I pulled it out anyway because I only have seven inch or six inch. Oh, you found the samples. Nice. Pro Weft Supreme Light Fusible Interfacing and Pro Sheer Elegance Light Fusible Interfacing from Fashion Sewing Supply. I'm gonna photograph that. There we go. I could take a screenshot, I know, but on my phone it'll be great <laughs> because I can look at it <laughs> anywhere I'm at. All right, we're ready. We got everything. Make some Sequoia cargo pants. We're going to be doing a lot of work. It's funny. The pants sewing is the easy part, right? You just have the inseams and outseams. All the other stuff, though, you have all that top stitching and pockets. This is going to be so satisfying. Should I do a contrast thread? <gasps> I think I should do a contrast thread. I think I should do pink. I have pink and Kelly green. And then I have all the boring ones, including gold. Oh, nice, Elena. I might just order that. I'm just, I'm having qualms with it because I have these two bolts of the, you know, but if I'm not gonna use it, right? I need something. Yeah, so, cool. All right, well. Thanks for coming. Nice to see you all. Pro contrast thread. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know me, Kelly Green. I made my Ames jeans in the Kelly Green. I love, I love it. 
So what do I have, el what else do I have as far as, so the only other thing I have like coordinating wise, I mean, if I'm gonna try, <laughs> uh, I have this sunblock fabric that I'm gonna make the James shirt out of, which looks like, can you even see that thing? Oy. Me and Shem do not like like small sketches or light ones, do we? Night, Terry. Or see ya, Terry. Have a good dinner. It's dinner time, right? <laughs> right, Carrie, I know. <laughs> what did I try and type today? And I was, and they were like, what? And so, and then I typed it again and I was like, oh, that's an autocorrect thing. And they tried to type it too. And they got the same thing and they're like, oh, I see now what you were trying to say. I was like, yeah. That was really funny. All right, well, I'll see you guys tomorrow, sewing part one. Uh, let's see what we're doing tomorrow. Let me give you an overview. Here's my tip. When you have these really big pattern instructions, look, I put two pages on one page and front to back. See? Look at that. I got four pages on one page of paper. All right, so we're gonna prep all our pockets. So we're gonna do the fronts tomorrow. <sighs> I don't know though, my, my uh, feeling is always start with the backs because backs are, in fact, I will. I'm just gonna start with the backs. I feel like when you're doing pants, you're. A lot of people are a little bit nervous when they're gonna sew pants, especially when they know there's a zipper fly on the horizon. So my suggestion is to do the backs first because that way you're kind of like getting the hang of things, getting the flow, you know your fabric, you know what your top stitching is, you know, um, and you're also more invested in it so that when you get to the front, you're a little bit more like, oh, I'm gonna keep going, I'm excited, I'm getting there. Um, and you've already sorted out dealing with your fabric and your machine and everything. So that is my recommendation because it doesn't matter. It will matter when you're doing things like side cargo pockets and we'll just, we'll just follow her directions for that or whatever. So, oh, could, yeah, you gotta say uh, flip on the short side. <laughs> and uh, don't do it, uh, there's some of them do them front to back, so it'll go all the way through and then go all the way back when you want it to do front, back, front, back. You just gotta do a test. So anyway, front, do your backs first and then we'll do the fronts. And then, and then that way we'll also do, be doing the fly on Saturday when more people can come and I think that might be helpful, so. Yeah, right, Lindsay? How's it going, Lindsay? Yeah, start out with the back. Get your sewing legs under you. That's what I always say with pants. So, all right. Hasta mañana, iguanas. I haven't said that in a while. <laughs> Thanks for coming. I'll see you in the guild. I'll see you here. I'll see you everywhere. So um, appreciate you coming. <laughs>